everybody what is going on we are in a 2016 ford fiesta st i've been wanting to do a review of one of these cars for a while because i've driven a focus st i wanted to know what the hype was surrounding these i test drove one at a ford dealership in boise and they weren't down with letting me review it even though i had proof that insurance would cover it if something happened to it and uh, i've just been kind of actively searching out a dealership that would let me use it northwest motorsport in uh, pasco washington had a 2016 black Fiesta ST, and they're letting me review it, and that's what we're in right now. So the Fiesta ST is quite a bit less powerful than a Focus ST, coming in 197 horsepower and 202 pound-feet of torque. The horsepower rating is uh, right at the top of the rev range, like just a hair under the red line. I believe it's at 6350, the red line's at about 6900, and the torque is peaking around 4200 rpm which makes her a pretty torquey little fun ride as with any other front wheel drive car with a decent amount of power you feel like you're going quicker than you are because it's just dragging you down the road while it is less powerful than the focus st it weighs quite a bit less the fiesta st weighs in just a hair over 2700 pounds which is quite a bit lighter than i would have expected out of a car this new so it does make for really fun just it goes you put your foot down it goes there's not a lot of turbo lag turbo is very small and it's rear mounted in the engine bay like a lot of front wheel drive turbo cars are these days the remarkable thing about the vsst comes when you start talking about cornering because it is just super planted and it gives you a whole bunch of confidence in turning corners quickly it just handles super well the steering is very direct you know right where you're going thus far i haven't pushed it hard enough to understeer in anything but it doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue until you're really working it maybe on a track or if you're way braver than i am so like i was talking about before the st is not remarkably fast it does zero to 60 in about 6.9 seconds but funny enough the quarter mile of a fiesta st stock for stock is only 0.1 seconds slower than the quarter mile of a focus st coming in at 14.9 that was a good time to point out that it has hill start assist my foot is off the brake and we're on a big incline and it just takes off and goes well, the first time it happened while i was driving it i thought the e-brake was on i'm not used to new cars one of the major appeals I think of the ST is that it isn't that shy of performance from the Focus ST, but it is a lot shyer in price. This one is priced at $14,900 at Northwest Motorsport with only 16,300 miles on it. One owner, clean Carfax. It's a good car and it'd be a fantastic daily. Not only that, it's still under factory warranty and Companies like Cobb and Mountain have modifications you can make to this car, increase the power and torque figures without voiding the factory warranty. So long as they are installed by a Mountain or a certified Ford technician or Cobb. Of course, if you decide to do that, don't take my word for it. Research it yourself. I don't want to be responsible for you blowing up your Fiesta ST. <laughs> Intake sounds really good. There's an old saying that applies to the first time I heard it, someone was talking about a Volkswagen Golf. It applies to a lot of cars I drive. This car is not a fast car, but it's a slow car that's fun to drive fast. I don't even know if slow would be the right word to describe it because it doesn't mess around compared to a lot of stuff. And uh, you know, that's coming from the perspective of somebody who daily drives a Miata, so anything feels fast to me. But I have to say, when I drove this for the first time, it was quite a bit faster than I had expected it to be. Furious 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine powering this car screeches just a hair over 30 miles per gallon on the freeway and high 20s around the city, which makes it fantastic as an option for a daily when you don't want to just buy a base model and have something that's not all that fun to drive every day. Transmission shifts really smooth. The power curve is very smooth, not a lot of turbo lag, you can feel it a little bit, but I, it's hitting full boost by probably around 3,000 RPM, and dragging you all the way up. A little bit of tire chirp there, going into second. The 
thing makes the cutest little turbo noises. I want to see if you guys can hear it. it sounds like a sneeze. It's hilarious. I just pray that no one winds up buying this car and putting a super loud blow off valve on it because that seems to be a plague of the Ford ST community. It's a pretty cozy ride too. It's got a little stiffer suspension obviously than you'd expect out of something like a base model or the one liter EcoBoost Fiesta, but for obvious reasons it was built with handling in mind. And it does quite well at that, as I mentioned before. It's just a fun car to drive, and it wouldn't be intolerable as a daily, but that's coming from someone who's daily driven a car that had $200 eBay coilovers on it for over a year. So anything's an upgrade from that, but put in perspective of other things like a newer WRX or something like that, it's about on par with that. Not overly stiff suspension. It's not uncomfortable. I'd love to take it on a road trip. So of course there's gonna be people in the comments saying, oh, that's a 190 my this makes me pass that. Why would you have to buy a Corvette? Oh, well, like I said, it's not the most powerful car. It's not the fastest car. It's not even the best handling car. But it is a very reasonably priced car and a super fun one to drive. Anyone who sits in the driver's seat of a Fiesta ST and says they didn't have fun driving it is just lying to themselves. It's a super fun car and I have to say it's not something I would have expected to like as much as I do. Um, I always sort of had a disdain for the ST crowd just because of the Focus ST and the people who drive them. Needless to say, with this one having as low mileage as it does, there's no cob stickers to scrape off the back window. And not that I have a problem with cob, it's just it's a little misleading to put a cob sticker on your car when all you have is a downpipe. It's the perfect daily driver for a person who's into cars that doesn't want to go take out a loan on a car that they're not going to have fun driving. You know what I mean, you don't want to go buy a base model Camry or a base model Civic, you want a Type R, you want an ST, you want a WRX, not an Impreza. Just a good new car with a warranty that's good to drive and good on gas and gets you where you need to be and you have a fun time while you're doing it. This particular car has the Sony sound system and Ford's awesome Sync 3 Bluetooth system. Uh, right now it has version 1.0 on it, but you can upgrade it to version 2.2 for free, which enables you to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Interior, not bad. It's a step above what you'd expect out of a Ford, I'd say. Still pretty plasticky, but uh, seats are really comfortable. There was a Recaro option, this car doesn't have them. But I can't complain about the seats, they've got decent side bolstering. Not a lot of bolstering on the bottom, but a lot of speakers in here couple in the dash, two in each front door, probably one in each back door. I don't know how many they are. It's got two 12 volt not cigarette lighters, one in the front, one in the back, which is pretty remarkable because uh, the kind of people that are old enough to have cell phones are the kind of people that do not fit in the back seat of a Fiesta ST. Two USB chargers in the center console, keep your phone charging, of course a little hole out the front of the center console so you can run the cable through it and not have to crunch it shut. That's pretty nice to just have direct USB charging, not to mention you can uh, load music through those USB ports or update the sync system through those USB ports. It's got Wi-Fi connectivity so you can download new updates for the sync system over the air. I'm sure there's other things you can do with the Wi-Fi but I don't know. <laughs> Overall, if you're trying to be in a quick little fun daily driver, say under fifteen dollars to $20,000, and you want to get good fuel economy, have fun while you're driving it, it's hard to beat the Fiesta ST. Sure, you'll have to deal with people mocking you, like Chappie does not like this car, but you'll, you'll live. It's a fun little car, and uh, if you're enjoying it, then that's all that really matters, right? I have to say, like I said earlier, I didn't expect to like this car, but not only do I like the car, I like it a whole lot more than I expected I was going to. 
Uh, so much so, in fact, I bought it. 